And Novik's deep dive. Eh, medium dive. These are the Global Graphene Group, Enovix, Innovate, Group 14 Technologies, Amprius, um, and Sila Technologies. All are privately held except for two. Enovix, trading on the NASDAQ as ENVX, and Amprius, trading on the NASDAQ as AMPX. The largest power increase over pure graphite anodes thus far is 26% to 500 milliamp hours per gram, that was Amprius, um, by using silicon nanowires involving grown silicon nanowires that are chemically bo bonded to the metal current collector by the alloy formation counteracts this. Production of batteries using a silicon nanowire graphite composite electro were first introduced by Amprius in 2014. And Novix went public in mid-2021, and Amprius went public last November or September, I believe September. Both use special purpose acquisition corporations, SPACs, rather than IPOs, and both had approximately the same valuation at, or market cap at merger or about $450 million. Each hold dozens of patents and use a proprietary method to address the silicon anode expansion. Let's compare the only two publicly traded players in the space, Enovix and Amprius. <clears throat> Enovix. Cash per share, $1.86. Return on assets, negative uh, 37%. Return on equity, negative 46%. Return on investment, negative 38%. Enterprise value, $2.61 billion. Cash last fiscal year, $322 million. Assets, $330 million. Liabilities, $23 million. Inventory, $634,000. R&D last fiscal year, 58 million, market cap, 3.05 billion. Amprius, cash per share, 0.76. Return on assets, negative 46%. Return on equity, negative 60%. Return on investment, negative 53%. Enterprise value, 538 million. Cash last fiscal year, 69.7 million. Assets, 75.2 million. Liabilities, 6.92 million. Inventory, 500,000. R&D last fiscal year, 2.03 million. Market cap, $615 million. So Inovix has $322 million cash versus $70 million for Amprius, or nearly five times more. Enterprise value favors Inovix by a factor of about five also. Assets also five times higher on the Inovix side. This squares with a five times higher market cap. R&D is 25 times higher on the Inovix side. Actually, 28 times higher. Back to that in a minute. Next metrics. Inovix. PE, negative 61.03, price book, 9.49, price sales, 475.99, PEG, negative 34.3, book value is share, a buck 97.5, market cap, 2.96 billion. Amprius, PE, negative 3505, that's negative 35.05, price book, 9.18, price sales, 206.56 PEG, positive 52.15, book value is share, uh, 0.79, market cap, 650 million. So here's one thing in favor of Amprius, the burn rate. For 21,000 in sales, Novik spent 167 million in the trailing 12 months. Amprius had 700,000 in sales and spent 23 million, or about 12% of what Novix did. So the burn rate is about 10 times higher. Amprius had positive cash flow of 15 million, and Novix had negative cash flow of 150 million. And Novix is twice as leveraged. Novix had a 98% drop in revenue uh, prior quarter. Amprius saw a 14% drop. PEG, the most important metric to many people I know, was negative 34 at Novix and positive 53 at Amprius. Um, April 3rd, 2022, and Novix had 408 million in cash and equivalents. That number was 293 million on April 2nd, uh, 2023, a year later. In December 2021, Novix redeemed 11.5 million warrants and received 130 million cash proceeds while diluting shareholders by the same amount of shares, 11.5 million. They lost 115 million in cash over the next year. Without that influx, they'd be sitting on 163 million cash right now. 
um, instead. Negative 115 million without the uh, without the the warrant uh, uh, value coming in. Recall that Anovix went public through SPAC in uh, mid 2021. Six months later, they converted those warrants by keeping the stock price above twelve dollars a share. Amprius has forty five million warrants outstanding at eleven fifty to twelve fifty. They would bring in about four hundred million upon similar redemption. At the stock price necessary to automatically trigger that redemption, eighteen dollars a share, their market cap would be one point five billion, half of a Novix, and adding four hundred million cash to the balance sheet, which would go a long way to supporting that market cap. Uh, back to R and D. 2 million in Amprius, 58 million at Anovix. That's a big part of their burn. This tells me they have a little focus on scaling their current battery technology. I believe TJ Rogers is betting on a breakthrough. What else tells me that Anovix isn't planning to scale right now is their reasons for Fab One being unautomated. Uh, still, the instructions were in Chinese, they said, so we couldn't build it. What? <laughs> Another thing that tells me Novix isn't really focused on scaling right now is Fab2 in Malaysia. Uh, let's dive in there real quick. YBS International, formerly known as LNG Resources or LNG Group. Here is that company's website in 2006. Here it is in 2015 with the same 2006 articles and copyright date. Everything you click on leads to what it did in 2006. YBS trades in the Malaysian Stock Exchange uh, with a market cap of $38 million. How then are they covering the seventy million dollars or seventy percent of the um, of the YBS investment in Fab Two? Well, because Inovix is collateralizing it for the bank. The press release says their investment is non-dilutive, but doesn't say how Inovix is paying its share, nor does it say what the collateral is. If it's stock, and I don't know what else it could be, then it, if the collateral gets called in, it's dilutive. Inovix is basically lending YBS shares in the form of collateral to induce a loan funded by a third party to finance their expansion, plus ponying up $30 million cash that is non-refundable. This YBS group is expected to take this $100 million, expand the factory in Penang, train workers in South Korea, purchase equipment which neither they nor Inovix have any experience on, and ramp up nanotech production of exacting specifications to 9 million units a year volume by next March. Forgive me if I don't see that playing out exactly as laid out. YBS says on its website that its precision injection molding factory is at 95 uh, per industrian uh, in Penang. That's the address of the Penang Science Park where they do white label manufacturing currently of plastics and connectors for primarily US and European markets. These folks are not Foxconn. They appear to be small struggling contract manufacturer of unspecialized parts for industrial use. When they can't meet production goals, guess who Inovix will blame as they stall production to prioritize their R&D? I think TJ Rogers has a bold idea here. He is going for the home run. He needs to stall as long as possible and pays money top engineers as he can to work on the issues with um, with uh, the silicon anode. Uh, that's why R&D is hands down his biggest expense. Amprius trades 265k shares a day versus 6.7 million for Inovix, about 25 times higher. They are focused on producing the technology they have, not hoping for a miracle. With this current technology, which is less robust than Amprius, um, Inovix is forced to exaggerate things, like its army contract, quote unquote. Inventus Power um, is one of four companies competing for a contract with the, for the, uh, with the Army, and they outsource the battery packs uh, with over a dozen battery vendors in their testing, including Amprius, including Sila, including Group 14, including Enerve and uh, GGG. Amprius passed the nail penetration test last year. They announced the size of the order received afterwards for testing 30 battery packs. Inovix did not. Inventus has to win the contract competition over the three other participants, and they need to choose Inovix as the battery pack supplier for fulfillment out of a dozen suppliers. Plus, yet Inovix act like it's a home, like it's a done deal just on the horizon. It's not real. What is real is that Amprius won Best in Show 2023 at the International Battery Seminar. 
What is real is that Amprius has a three-year contract with BAE Systems to provide batteries for cutting-edge airplanes, including the one that just aced its test using Amprius power. What is real is that Amprius just came out with a 500 milliamp hours per gram uh, battery, the highest milliamp hour of any lithium ion manufacturer. What is real is that Amprius is the pioneer in silicon nanowire graphic, graphite composition since 2014. I think Amprius, as the only publicly traded competitor to Inovix, is a better play. Amprius is building a factory in Colorado and they've already leased the land, not subcontracting manufacturing to Malaysia. Amprius is focused on delivering what they have, which is the highest output lithium ion batteries in the world. Amprius is the real takeaway from this research, in my opinion. And I am long AMPX.